Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Mind of Steel. This is the approximately weekly show in which I, Reynard Wilson, guide you through the murky and mysterious wasteland that is the mind of one man. His name is Mark Steele, but we enlightened few who watch Mind of Steel refer to him as Britain's most ludicrous conspiracy theorist. And boy, is he a wacky one. Today's episode is actually part two of a three-part series called Undercover with the Nutters. It's all about the time when I went to infiltrate Mark Steele's organization, and I was able to obtain a series of very candid interviews with the great man himself. He believed I was one of his nutters. He believed I was the person who was going to make an epic video that was going to debunk the, the things that MC Toon had previously said about him. Well, unfortunately for Mark, the opposite was the truth. I was actually a secret agent working for MC Toon. And, and we were using these interviews to compile a, a, a series of videos of which these are now the edited highlights, revealing just how crazy Mark Steele was. Uh, this is a shortened version of the video that MC Toon originally posted on his own channel. And if you want to see that unadulterated original version of this show, uh, please just click through to the link that I will provide in the show notes. That is where you'll find MC Toon's version. And uh, now that these uh, basic announcements are out of the way, I would like you to prepare yourself, sit yourself down in a comfy chair, obtain a hot or cold beverage as suits your own personal drinking pleasure. And now spend the next half an hour in the company of myself, and Mr. Mark Steele for Undercover with the Nutters, part two. You went on to ask him about some more things that were specific to his claims about the, the uh, radio frequency and about what he says, the weapon systems that were installed on these light poles. And specifically, you were asking him about ionization. I thought I'd ask him some basic science questions just to see how we'd answer them. Okay, so what's ionization? Ionization is where you knock an ion off the uh, off an atom. You knock an can you, so you, what, what's an ion? An ion, there's an eon and an ion, one's positively charged, one's negatively charged. Okay, so if I get this right, there's, there's an, an eon and an ion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And which one's negatively charged and which one's positively charged? You're asking me the question there, now I'll have to check with you that. Uh, Unfortunately, he didn't check his data, so I, I will never know whether the eon or the <laughs> ion is positively charged. Maybe this we was... could review. Maybe we could review the actual uh, physics right. of this. I, I, I should point out that my own science education is woefully incomplete. But what I remember from GCSE chemistry is that ionization is the process of gaining or losing an electron by which a, a, a an atom or a molecule becomes an ion. There are two types. He, he, he lists two types and calls that an, an eon and an ion, which is ridiculous. It's a cation, which is positively charged, or an anion, which is negatively charged. And so if a photon knocks an electron off of an atom, then it becomes an, a cation because now it's positively charged. It's lost a, an electron, which has a negative charge. I thought this was just very telling because Mark was prepared to make stuff up to my face. He, he knows, I'm sure, that he's making this up. He, he's probably feeling at that moment some discomfort, yes. which of course is, is why at that point I kept asking him science questions like, um, can non-ionizing radiation cause ionization? If non-naturally occurring radiation does not cause ionization, is that right? No, not non non ionized the, the the spectrum the non ionizing the non ionizing radiation spectrum doesn't cause ionization, but that's only natural occurring. Right. I can so, cause so, ionization. So. I can cause ionization right across the whole spectrum. I can cause ionization using sound. Oh my gosh, that is all brand new science. Amazing sound. It, it, probably a Nobel Prize winning uh, claim if Mark could prove that, that he, he could cause ionization with sound. So, yeah. Um, so many Nobel Prizes probably would have just happened in that little part there because um, 
non-ionizing radi radiation is called non-ionizing because it can't ionize. And he's saying it can. What he's saying is that naturally occurring non-ionizing radiation does not ionize, but man-made non-ionizing radiation is somehow ionizing. This is a sort of weird duality of the spectrum that, that Mark has invented, uh, invented or, or probably copied from, from, from David Icke or, or one of the sort of naturopathic type people who, you know, th there is a sort of folk belief amongst um, certain kind of sort of anti-science movements that, that man-made stuff is bad, that natural is good. Uh, and so he sort of superimposed this on his own belief system. Yeah, that could be. So um, we have another one where he's specifically talking about how he thinks this happens. It depends on the polarization of the signal. Right. So, oh, so could a signal? What, wow, so many new things here. This is what we've got to look up. So, what what does what, what do you mean by the polarization of a signal? Well, a photon in the non-ionizing radiation spectrum, there's none of energy in the photon to cause ionization. However. Yeah. If I polarize enough photons in that focus, it's how a laser can cut stainless steel. I mean, anybody right. that tells you that this natural sunlight can cut stainless steel, I'll tell you that crazy. However, I can cut stainless steel with a laser. I can use okay. the same spectrum. And I can so, so you're saying you couldn't focus sunlight. Uh, if you focus sunlight into a, a tiny point, that wouldn't cut stainless steel because it's natural. It's natural occurring. However, the first direct energy weapon system was actually uh, magnifying glasses used quite a number of years ago to focus sunlight. So, 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 you're saying so, so, so that would be a direct energy weapon if I could focus that enough sunlight happen. into. But that's naturally occurring light, isn't it? Exactly. But what you're doing is you're then ma you, you're then adding the man-made bit, which right. you're adding the lens to focus the radiation. All right. So he he's he's caught himself. He's talking about natural and unnatural, made this distinction. And then you challenged him on naturally occurring sunlight. And then he brought up this focus thing with lenses or something. Right. And and now this naturally occurring light can be used harmfully. And so how does he, he has to get himself out of this? Yeah, how, how does a nat natural radiation become man made? Uh, and he's sort of he's he's saying that well the lens magically transforms one thing into the other thing. Yeah, um, I think he has confused polarization with um, focus. Right. Yeah. So he, he's he's obviously got a num a, a bunch of very basic concepts muddled up. So when when he says polarization, he probably means intensity. So he uh, and when he talks about ionization he probably means heating effect. So we know that if yeah. you focus light into a tight enough uh, point, it will certainly heat things up. That's not the same as ionization. Uh, yeah. and, and, and to be clear, to be fair, if you heat something enough, it goes from you know solid to liquid to gas to plasma. Plasma is ionized gas. But that's from heat, not from knocking an electron off by a photon. Very right. Different. Yeah. So, 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 ionization could occur as a sort of an ancillary effect as a result of heating something enough. I, I don't think Mark is making that kind of nuance here. He's he's really yeah. just trying to gish gallop me with a bunch of sciencey sounding words, in the hope that I'll, I'll, in the hope I'll ask him about Satan or the Cabal or some topic that that he is different way topic, more yes. comfortable talking about. Things uh, that are not as testable. But of course, because he was uncomfortable, this is why I had to ask him even more. So if I have, let, let's say, for example, people say that, that uh, radio frequency, like, like, like um, what they call HF radio, is non-ionizing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, you're saying that's a false claim. It's totally false. That's a sort of fundamental claim, I think, isn't it? Because if you, if you, if you believe McToon, he, he's saying that it's, it's, it's a clear, simple thing that that non-ionizing radiation is does not cause ionization, but could cause a heating effect. Uh, and, and you're saying a completely different thing. So where, where might somebody kind of debunk? How would we go about debunking that well, claim? By you, know, you just have to understand the science. The, you know, the right, but, but where, what, what, what textbooks could we read that would, would make it? Because I've got lots. Yeah, there's lots. There's do, lots do you, so do you think, think you could, is that something you could pass on to? Because I, I think we just need one example of um, 
uh, where where a let's say a microwave signal is causing ionization because right, if you well, ask my tune i did a video i did it obviously for the dummies out there what i did i did a video of uh i placed the piece of uh aluminium strip in mm -hmm. the microwave oven and not only did i cause ionization but i actually had a plasma uh, so so i saw yeah i saw that video so it was like um an electrical electrical spark jumped from the, the the piece of aluminium to the mesh screen of the microwave. So that's ionization, is that's it? That's ionization then. Oh my. Go so ahead. yeah, uh is it did did he ever provide you uh with the loads and loads of textbooks that he has uh referenced there? No. He he did not provide me with the, this this vast cornucopia of knowledge which he claims private access to. Uh as far as I know that is still on a sh a shelf somewhere in Gateshead, uh, inaccessible to me. Of course, he, again, he, as we said before, he's conflating heating, which can cause plasma. And he mentioned plasma uh, with the type of ionization that we're talking about in-, in Yeah, so, uh, so in this case, if you put a piece of aluminum foil or any metallic object inside a microwave oven, that, that metallic object will act as an antenna and will generate a little bit of a, 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 a voltage across either end. Yeah, you'll get a spark between the bit of metal and the casing, the internal casing of the microwave oven. That is not ionization within the, that, that's the, the metal acting as an antenna, not metal being ionized. There's several different things that happen in there, but it's not ionization like ionizing radiation does. Right, I, I, and so I, I think Mark has, always operated in, in a space where these these little distractions are good enough. He's he's generally preaching to an audience that hasn't had any science education. And you know, look, my, my background is computer science. My, my knowledge of physical sciences is, is, is fairly woeful. But, but I, I think I, I, I know enough to know that that he's he's trying to short at me, which is why for the purposes of these interviews, I, I had to pretend to have absolutely no knowledge at all and be completely bowled over by any claim that Mark made, no, no matter how audacious it was. But, but a lot of Mark's claims fly in, not just in, against the laws of, of, of science, as, as we know, but, but against, uh, you know, against our lying eyes, against things that, you know, that we, we could, uh, you, know, you only have to open your eyes to, to determine that they are not true. For example, um, you know, he, he's cl he claims that 5G is not a, uh, a communication system. It's not a telephone system. And uh, 5G phones do not and cannot exist. Well, it's, it can't be 5G because a 5G phone is a columnated signal. It's technical right. prominence focused energy and air. And if I put you in between it, the focused energy and air in an antenna system that can do that, the mobile phone, believe us, brain injury is going to be the least of your Right. right. So, so hold on, if I, let me just rephrase that. So you're saying that the 5G phone cannot be 5G because it doesn't contain a directed antenna. Is that right? That's exactly. But hold on, couldn't, couldn't that just be a different interpretation? For example, doesn't 5G phone mean a phone designed to work with the 5G system? So it might be that the 5G phone is very similar to a 4G phone. It's just designed to work with no, uh, a different... The 5G the 5G is that it's technical parameters focused energy mm -hmm. in the air. So you have to have an antenna design that focuses energy. But, but, All right, so he's he's talking about the, the technical parameter of 5G is focused energy in air, which uh, you asked him about and other people have asked him about where did that come from? He... He doesn't really have a citation that he ever can bring up. He, I think he may have seen it somewhere at some time, but it's not actually in the specification, which is publicly available um, in, in release 15 or 16 of the 3GPP specification, which he also clearly has never looked at. Uh, it is not focused energy and air, but it- No, can, no, it, yeah, this, this yeah. speaks to how Mark understands 5G. At some point, he has seen a, a spurious connection between um, some sort of putative battlefield directed energy weapons. He, he has noticed that, that uh, radio frequencies can be used on the battlefield in, in directed energy weapons. He has noticed then that 
similar frequencies are used in telecommunication systems. And he's made this sort of link in his mind that therefore they must be the same thing. But unfortunately for, for this particular claim, you can go to a shop right now and you can buy a 5G phone. And the, yeah. the 5G promise is that you can get 10 times the bandwidth at least, provided you're in a 5G area, as using a 4G phone. That's a testable claim. And probably a year from now, the majority of the phones sold that cost more than $200 will have 5G uh, radio systems built into them because that will be the dominant system that you're... So, so this is going to be a... This is already a testable claim. I mean, I, I find it quite interesting that Mark has built a sort of shelf life into his own scam. Yeah, it's testable and, and there, is a, there is an exit uh, time when, when these things cannot be claimed anymore. Um, right, yeah. So, so remember, Mark... Mark is still enjoying his 15 minutes of fame. Unfortunately, Mark makes his money by scamming people. So he's not going to go quietly. He's not going to ever admit that he was wrong. He doesn't have that capability. Uh, unfortunately, where his scam is moving is actually... You know, look, you know what? You can insult telephone systems as much as you like. Nobody gets hurt. But, but where he's going next is to vaccines. And he, is, he has become a, a more vocal person in the anti-vax movement. And in particular, he claims that uh, vaccines contain nanoparticles and that these nanoparticles are... Uh, exist for no purpose other than to make the 5G energy weapon more effective. I, okay, cool. I'm if you can get, so, so that's really important. If, you, if we've got, if you have got Toon saying a wrong thing, we can get it, we can find, okay, I'll, I'll have to go back to, was this on the interview that, that you did with him or was it on a subsequent video? No, no, he said it in a, he said it in a subsequent video. I think it was the video right. you sent me. Uh, he basically said there was no such thing as uh, nano antennas. Right. Okay, so I'll have to see what that is, because, I mean, it, it may be that I think his claim was there was no such thing as radio frequency nano antennas. And well, you see, the, the, the trouble is what he's looking for is something completely different. Uh -huh. You know, the size of the, the, size of the uh, antenna. It, let's see, I said, if I was going to speak to you, right, yeah. with, a bit, with a bit of information, and you don't have the correct antenna in your ear, you can't hear me. Do you understand? Um, antenna, right. you mean like, hold on, do you mean in my actual ear or in a, in a radio device? In your actual ear. Oh, well, it could be a radio. Because my ear has an eardrum, and I guess that's designed to pick to up the vibration. It picks yeah. up sound waves, yeah? It doesn't pick up light waves. It picks no. up sound waves. Yeah? But it's just like, you know, like, a, for example, a microphone can't pick up light. It's exactly. And, a, and an optical sensor can't pick up sound. But exactly. I, don't, I don't kind of get where, where that leads to, though. I know because what he what he didn't understand was I was talking about the nano particulates in the vaccines. Right. Okay. Brilliant. Well, I think we want to get on to. Let's, let's I know, but it doesn't. Right. If I fire a microwave radiation at your eardrum, I'll yeah. punch a hole through it. It doesn't matter whether the fact it can't it can't hear it. Mm -hmm. Do you see what he's trying? What he's trying to do is trying to conflate the fact that the nano particulates aren't the correct size to pick up the microwave radiation signal to interpret it. Your ear can't interpret a laser. Right, okay, no, I don't think he was saying, so I think what he was saying in his videos was that he felt that the, okay, I, I, okay this is it's kind of hard for me to get this logic. Let me just take you through what I think he was saying and you tell me where he got it wrong. Okay, so he's saying that for any radio frequency device, mm -hmm. the antenna has to be tuned to the signal that it's intended to receive. Yeah. And for a, a typical radio antenna of, of, of the simplest kind, it's usually a quarter of the wavelength. So if you take a uh, like wavelength like, um, uh, like 66 uh, gigahertz or something like that, the, a quarter of the wavelength of that would be significantly larger than a nanoparticle. That's so his, his that part... is correct. No, no, he's totally, that's totally correct. Right. But like what I'm saying, what he doesn't understand is what those nanoparticles are for. Right. 
You see, the nanoparticles aren't there to, to reflect the signal back to the antenna. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? No, no, but he didn't say they were there to reflect. He, he oh, said... No, but that's that. what they... But that's... That, no, no, that's exactly what he's saying. He, you see, yeah, you can only interpret the signal with the correct, with the, with the correct antenna size. That's what he's yeah. talking about. So what he's talking about is the interpretation of sending a signal so it can interpret it. Those nanoparticles aren't for that. He didn't use the word interpretation, though, Mark. What he said was, assuming that the purpose of the nanoparticle was to um, absorb as much possible radiation to make a microwave weapon more effective, he said that, that particles of that size would not be efficient absorbers of that radiation. You're talking complete bollocks. So, um, did, you, did you understand that? I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, at the time, I didn't know what he was talking about, so... What and, I kept trying to do was do? restate. No, no, I don't. No, <laughs> I, I kept trying to restate what I thought he meant in a way that seemed less completely bonkers to me. Uh, you know, th this talk of whether ears have antennas in them uh, and, and lasers. Uh, yeah. Um, Nothing he really says makes sense, and I'm. I'm getting. Saying he's, he's just counting on the fact that, that the sort of people who genuinely believe in him don't invest much time in trying to make sense of what he says. It, it's, it's anyway yeah. like it, it's more like how um, you know if, if you're if you're listening to the liturgy in a high mass, are, are you necessarily trying to make sense of? every single word of it are you are you trying are you experiencing this as a logical proposition or are you just vibing with it right and, yeah, I, and I think that's yeah. what mark is hoping that we'll all do here we'll vibe with his scary sounding thing about nanoparticles in in vaccines but uh the the more you listen to it the the less it makes sense yeah I, I, and as i as i got through more of these interviews to my pleasure and horror, <laughs> Mark started freestyling even more. Um, <laughs> I, I, guess I, I think, can we, at least, I think we need to address a couple of points. Nanoparticles is a byproduct of manufacturing. If you, if you stir something in a vessel made of stainless steel, you'll get bits of stainless steel in the finished product. Um, that particular study he talks about actually shows the absolute incredible purity found in the in the vaccines because there's so few particles in it. Number number two, these things are inherent in our environment. You inhale tungsten every day; it happens. We have it in our in uh, our body. When you eat fish, you get mercury. Um, all these things are already in our body. And then third, um, he his description of what might be happening to magnify or increase the virility of a of a 5g radio frequency signal right, so because his, of these his, particles his basic claim is that if you become injected because it contains these nanoparticles it will some way enhance the the effectiveness you will become a more susceptible target to this directed energy weapon <laughs> but but that really can't be true i mean the only okay you could imagine i suppose a hypothetical system where you're injected with some substance that makes you a, a better absorber of of the microwave energy. But we know that the you know the the wavelength of you know a, a gigahertz frequency thing is going to be a few centimeters. A nanoparticle is much smaller. Therefore, you know that 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 way uh, uh, that particle is invisible to, yeah. to a wave that large. And and he, but he tries to address that just by saying you have to understand the science which is what he often does he he'll, he'll basically try and wave his hands he'll try and distract and say i'll give you the science data you just have to take it that i'm telling you the, the truth well, he, he, he speaks down to people that don't understand the science without ever providing the science he never does um yeah. I, I mean this wasn't though the the only time mark um freestyled i mean mark, mark is Mark does not know any limits to his wisdom. Um, I remember in the interview you did with him, you became particularly incensed with him at a time when he claimed that 5G radiation was responsible for burning some children alive in 
North London. I live in North London. I've never heard any stories of children being burnt alive by, uh, uh, by a 5G. But Mark referenced another London tragedy. Um, a few years ago, a, a, a tower block burnt down. Uh, people died. It was an absolute tragedy. And uh, it called into question an entire architectural practice of, of um, a particular practice called cladding, where they, they renovate uh, tower blocks by placing sort of uh, an aluminium superstructure around it. Um, Mark thinks that the Grenfell tower block disaster was caused by 5G radiation. The Grenfell fires were caused by some kind of resonance between the cladding and the building structure which caused some kind of overheating, which led to a fire. Is that correct? Well, it did. Well, we don't know what actually was the initiator of the fire. We heard it was a, um, you know, a fridge. May have been a fridge. However, right. The smart meter deployment in at Grenfell. The emissions, the wave waveform emissions. Right. What happens? The cladding had a thirty millimeter gap mm -hmm. in between it, so that would act as a capacitor. So you've got these two aluminium plates, you've got this expanded polystyrene inside. If I fire radiation in there, you'll start to see a reflection. So like there's a dielectric, you'll start to see- Right, so is it, okay. So, so the, the material between the cladding was acting as a, was the cladding made of a m metallic material? Aluminium, aluminium it, was, right. it had a, okay. two, a double edge, two, two parts aluminium. Mark, once again, is on both sides of his own argument. He's accepting the mainstream view that the Grenfell Tower disaster was caused by a fridge which caught fire in one of the apartments on the fourth floor. That fire spread to the material which was packing the cladding, and that, that material caught fire, which allowed the, the fire to spread to the upper floors of the building, which resulted in the disaster that, uh, that took place. But somehow, smart meters have something to do with it. None of that makes sense. Uh, maybe he thinks that it was uh, not a fridge, but even th if even then, what what does it? He said that there's a, a gap between the cladding and the the building. Right. So um, he, he's proposing that the building was its original facade was concrete. Uh, it had an aluminium superstructure, and I think there was some kind of polystyrene material packing the the, the bit in between. So this is this was an architectural feature that was retrofitted onto the building to make it more. Uh, thermally efficient, but unfortunately they use flammable materials. Yeah, not a good idea. But so I think what he's he's trying to say with and and I think he lacks the vocabulary for it is that he thinks that there was a standing wave set up between the cladding and the either the the concrete or another layer of cladding, like maybe two layer. I don't know why you'd have it. Yeah, he's he's sort of suggesting I think that, inside that, layer that that some kind of energy is building up, causing. Uh, I, let's say heat to accumulate inside this cladding structure, which he thinks is the real cause of the fire, but also it was caused by a fridge. <laughs> so which is it? it? It doesn't make any kind of sense, but so little of, of what Mark makes sense if you take the time. And, and he said, do your own research and don't trust him. And that's it. That's great advice, Mark. That's really good advice. Get the knowledge, guys. Don't get it from Mark. We no, but when when Mark freestyles, he, uh, you know, he he's an expert on architecture. Uh, he also considers himself to be an expert on medicine. Of course. Uh, I, I, and and um, for for those of you suffering from from the the very real disease of diabetes, Mark thinks he has the cure. Pretty much all doctors agree that viruses are a thing that exist. But are there any experts who might come down on the other side of the argument? Who who thinks that viruses don't exist? Well, I think the problem, a lot of a lot of the problems with the, the the mainstream medical community, mainstream medical community are indoctrinated. That's why they get a doctorate. They're indoctrinated, and that's why they don't understand the interface between electromagnetic radiation and, uh, you know, a lot of the sicknesses that go about, like the 2.4 gigahertz that causes diabetes. When you ever heard any of the medical community tell you to turn your Wi-Fi off if you get diabetes? I've got to confess, I've never heard anyone in the medical community say that. Exactly, because they're indoctrinated. Yes, I've also never heard anybody in the medical community I, I, say I that. I don't ever. think anyone has anyone but Mark 
has ever made that claim. I'm not in the business of offering medical advice. If you suffer from diabetes, please do not take advice from either <laughs> of us or from Mark Steele. Yes. Consult your physician. Uh, I suspect that switching off your Wi-Fi will not improve your condition. It may encourage you to go out for a few more walks, though. So there might be something in it. Well, that's certainly good advice there, I think. Uh, pretty safe to say that. But yeah, um, I like how he said that's why they're called doctors, because they're indoctrinated. Like, he, like he just hand waves away years and years of education and everything that a doctor actually goes through to get good at what they're doing. And never mind them, Mark is smarter than all of them. Well, and Mark, in, in his own world, believes himself to be the, the smartest human being ever. Uh, and everyone who, who disagrees with him is, is a dummy. The, the conventional understanding of type 2 diabetes, that it's a, it's a condition caused by, uh, you know, related to obesity and lack of exercise, um, that, that is not true in Mark's world. It, it's, uh, it is caused by Wi-Fi, and therefore, uh, obviously, it didn't exist before the invention of Wi-Fi despite the fact that this condition was diagnosed, I think, you know, in the 17th century or, or something like that. It, it, it's, it, it is a preposterous claim. Well, uh, maybe I, they I, were using 5G back then. It, it could be. It's possible that somebody, some time traveler, had, uh, you know, transported some Wi-Fi devices back to the courts of the Assyrian Empire and the Mughals and, and you know, all these, these sort of a ancient peoples who, who first described uh, the... the the, the symptoms of diabetes. Um, more likely, as with everything, Mark said that he, he's just plain wrong. He, he's he's making stuff up. Uh, and or I think, I think misinterpreting mm, actual stuff by not reading it. Yeah, I, I, I think is, I think this is, this is as, as you've said a number of times. This is Dunning Kruger writ large. This, this is this is Mark um, trying to teach his own stupidity to all of us. Uh, he, he, this isn't all he has to say about diabetes, though. He, he, he does go on a little bit more. Is, is that something? Um, what's the the source for that claim? That the, the uh, where would I where would I verify that statement? That well, if that I want to cause, if I get Sprague Rowley rats, and I want to cause them to develop diabetes, what I do, I pump them with a two point four gigahertz frequency, right. uh, I, and they just develop diabetes. I, it just it just occurs to me. I, I, I've got a Wi-Fi transmitter in my home, and one of the frequencies I think that transmits at is 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4, yeah. 2.4 free part of spectrum. That's why I've got a massive epidemic of people getting diabetes. Yeah, so Mark, you're saying Mark, you've got it, Sal asked you for um, evidence in relate the scientific evidence that that causes diabetes. Yeah. Is that published in the paper somewhere? Well, it causes diabetes in Sprague Rowley rats, and obviously rats are used in the most experiments to try and mimic. Yeah, yeah, but is that pub is that published? Yeah, yeah, published scientific. All right, yeah. so we'll, we'll we'll add that to the list, and you, and we'll, we'll would you be able to share the preferably a URL, but a link or a, or a PDF of that that paper? So yeah, we yeah. Can, so there's evidence you said that it causes diabetes in rats. Is there any evidence that it also causes diabetes in humans? Well, I think what they do, they use rats as a good tester. Uh, you know, it, it's a lot of the a lot of the things that uh, obviously you can't do full extrapolation. However, what we do have, we've got the epidemiological data of a massive increase in diabetes. So here he's talking about this uh, the study that did he ever provide this study to you? He he never actually provided me with anything at all. No, I I have since found what what I'm pretty sure he's talking about. Uh, in this study, um, eight, they had 24 rats total, eight rats in the test group. Um, and uh, oh, it's, it's out of an Iranian university, uh, the Shiraz uh, Medical Institute. I that, think. Yep, that's right. So uh, there were 24 rats, three groups, eight, eight rats in the test group that were exposed at, at a very close to a, a Wi Fi transmitter running. 24 seven for quite a, quite a long time. Um, and, and it, it found some stresses or some effects in, in these. They euthanized the rats after 45 days and then they dissected the rats pancreases and they noticed some 
cell structural changes which they claimed were consistent with uh, stress on the rat. Yes. So there's that. And then somehow he, he links through this multiple leaps of disconnected things to there is a trend currently of an increased type 2 diabetes that's been going for decades. Right, yeah. So, so at no point in the, to the studies, the, the study that I think Mark is referring to, they do not make any link at all between 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and diabetes in humans. This was just a rat study, a very small rat study that has never been replicated by any other institution. Uh, the, the the claim that that this could cause be a cause of diabetes in humans is entirely, I think, Mark's invention. But as you're saying, yeah, we scientists have known for a long time what the cause of type two diabetes is. It's it's overeating, it's obesity, it's lack of exercise. Uh, and and it has been on the rise since the end of the Second World War, which seems to be correlated with the uh, the rise of industrially produced foods, and not Wi-Fi. Yeah, uh, to 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 further question what it is, the type of problem that these rats potentially had would be more related to type one diabetes if there's any correlation at all, not type two diabetes. Well, also with with a population that small, with a, you know, it could just be that. You know, maybe all the rats in that particular cohort got some kind of infection that, that we, we just don't know. The, the, the study is is so small. You know, if you, if you actually take time to read the study, as Mark most likely hasn't, I'll be sure to have a link in the description. Yeah, the, 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 to it, the it's, particular study we think he's talking about. I'm, I'm really I'm trying to steal man Mark's argument here. There, there really isn't much to <laughs> go on to For Mark, it's a it's a struggle for relevance. So he has to to hitch his his little carriage. To, to whatever issues are, are, are getting people upset. Well, didn't we have a wonderful time in, in the company of Mark Steele? We've learned so much, so many scientific facts that, that I dare not even count them, but perhaps they number more numerous than the stars in the sky. Uh, and that's a pretty big number last time I looked. Uh, well, if you have not yet had enough Mark Steele, there will be a part three of this show, and that will be maybe in about two weeks time. If you want to see the unedited original version of this show, please just follow the link to MC Toon's channel, and the, the link will be in the show notes. And if you also want to discuss the exciting science that you may have learned, well, you can leave a comment below, but you can also join our Telegram discussion. And the link to that is right at the top, uh, just near the top of my channel page. Uh, and I would welcome you there to, to spread whatever observations and insights you have, having learnt and cogitated on the great man's wisdom. Uh, and that, for now, is all. I, I hope to return to you in approximately one week with another hefty dollop of Mark Steele's wisdom. And boy, are we ready for that. See you in a week. <laughs>